Hello. I'm having a problem with a JVC Super VHS uh, recorder, and this one has a digital time base corrector, so it's a decent machine. Sometimes it'll just randomly switch itself off, and I suspect a power supply fault. Let's have a look. So here it is, uh, and a couple of nice features on this one. So it has a digital time base corrector, which is uh, fairly unusual. It also has dynamic drum system which is, has a gearing set which can adjust the angle of the head drum in fast forward and rewind and it is usual for these machines that that doesn't work because the gears strip and I'm not going to worry about fixing that my actual problem is that sometimes when I switch it on it'll just switch off uh, or it'll stay on until I put a tape in and then switch off so uh, let's just try it now so I've just powered it up uh, I think that's normal Switch it on. It's got a tape in. And as ever, when you try to demonstrate a fault, it uh, won't show up. It's playing fine. <laughs> oh well. But I'm still fairly convinced it's a power supply fault because very often when it's not working, all I need to do is power it up on standby and leave it that way for an hour and then it'll work. So a capacitor failure in a power supply is very likely. Let's uh, just. Uh, check on a monitor what it does. Oh, the other thing I've noticed sometimes is the when I first switch it on, there's a lot of noise on the picture, a lot of um, lines. There we are, like that. Do so you see that? And again, that hints at power supply. There we go, look. And it's doing that even in standby. We're getting that noise. And it's not a bad connection because I've had different connections on there. So uh, then again, that looks like a power supply problem. So let's get this tape out. And uh, then we'll look at the power supply, which I think is a separate board on this model. All right, here's our machine. And uh, no, unfortunately, it's not a separate power supply board. That makes life harder. Also comes with some free dust. So initially, I'm going to take a visual look at the capacitors in the power supply and see if anything's obviously bulging. And they look okay, but uh, that's a nuisance that it doesn't have a separate power supply because that means taking the whole thing to pieces. And it also makes it very hard to test. And though there's a metal base on the underside, I'm fairly sure that taking that off will not improve access to the power supply one bit. Correct. They could have left a nice access area there for, in fact, for most of the, PC, the PCB to make servicing easier. But uh, in our throwaway society, they don't worry about such things. So this is going to be a little unpleasant to work on, but uh, let's get stuck in. Right, I've eventually got it apart. It turns out that the whole deck comes out with the PCB, but there are some screws in the deck which go onto these pillars here that you have to sort of get at underneath the carriage. Possibly you're supposed to take the carriage off. Really awkward to get to. Wasn't impressed with that at all. But now, having also undone screws at the back to allow the back panel to come off, we have access to the PCB. I don't like this. It's all in danger of falling apart. It's not a very nice arrangement at all. And undoing one of those screws here that was in those pillars allows this metal bracket over the back, to, back tension band to come free, which uh, again, I just don't like. It's uh, asking for things to get lost, isn't it? So at last we have access to the uh, power supply part. Let's test some of these capacitors. Um, still very poor access, but let's see what we can find. First thing I'm doing is taking a visual to see if there's any uh, electrolyte oozing at the bottom of any of these capacitors. Nothing obvious so far. Let's start testing them. I'm going to have the benefit of my um, modified ESR meter, which uh, has got a remote control cable on it. Okay, deck is off. Makes it a lot easier to get to the board now.
Well, I've been through as much of this power supply as I can. Bear in mind that one or two of the capacitors are shunted by circuitry, so you can't measure them. And I found none of them massively out. A few are, you know, a little low, but nothing that's a smoking gun. So whatever the problem is, I don't believe it's one of these power supply capacitors. So uh, it's going to be a bit hard to fix, isn't it? While we're here, let's have a look at the um, dynamic drum system on this deck. So apparently some of the gears split or strip and it just makes an awful noise. Let's have a quick look at that. Well, I've um, failed to find any smoking gun capacitors there. Um, I had a quick look at this dynamic drum mechanism here, but I can't see which gears are making it noisy, and I don't want to spend too much time on that. So uh, I think the only thing I can do for the moment is put it back together and see what it does. Oh well, at the very least, let's see if uh, the machine still runs as well as it did. Now I've uh, managed to uh, reassemble it. I've not fitted all the screws yet. Right, that was a dynamic drum system resetting. It's powering up cleanly enough. might be excess light. Let's turn this light off. That was an excess light problem. So it's still working as well as it was, but we're still getting that flickering. It may be a problem with a uh, capacitor on the back panels, so a bit hard to get to. Oh dear. Very hard to fix too. But I could also look at the soldering on one of these panels if I can get it out again. Right, I'll tell you what I've done. Everything's reassembled. Uh, I couldn't find any problems with the power supply, but the flickering problem I thought may have been uh, to do with poor connections on the scut at the back. So, though it's not terribly accessible without removing this board, and I don't know how to remove this board, I resoldered the top scut connector there. And that scut connector has the option of being uh, S-Video out, and that's the way I use it. I use it in S-Video mode, usually. So, uh, that's, I hope, maybe done something about the flickering problem. Uh, I've not screwed all the machine down yet, but let's just give it a whirl. And of course, what I was talking about earlier is light is a problem with VHS because you use optical sensors. You don't have this problem with beta and uh, such superior formats. But if I put that over the top, okay, I've actually got it now doing the, this is a five times picture search in Ford and it's quite stable. It'll quite happily carry on doing that indefinitely. So, uh, that's five times, seven times. It's working very well. And it does this thing where it uh, captures a bit of sound and plays it back. Right, even though that wasn't a very convincing repair, at least uh, we've learned something by stripping it down and reassembling it and learned a little bit more about how the mechanism works. And right now it's working, so uh, I'll have to settle for that. Uh, I've got plenty more coming along, uh, other machines to repair and hopefully repair them a bit better than this one. So please do remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.